Our interest is extremely clear. First of all, Israel is an ally of ours and the only thriving democracy in the region and a security interest. Secondly, it is in our national interest that the Middle East does not go nuclear across the board because if it does, we will see a Mexican gunfight at the end of which nobody will know who started it. I'm going to have to finish it there, well, but gentlemen... Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking out an interesting video where Douglas Murray is one of the speakers titled Douglas Murray discourses Iran and Israel on the BBC Daily Politics. Wow, I believe this is going to be interesting. Let's start with the video. Go. We spent most of the week talking about an angry minister on his bike and the Lib Dem Party conference. Elsewhere in the world, there may be more pressing concerns, in particular the threat of military conflict between Israel and Iran. Iran's president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, made his final address to the UN General Assembly yesterday before he steps down and accused the West of nuclear intimidation. Testing new generations of ultra-modern weaponry and the pledge to disclose these armaments on due time is now being used as a new language of threat against nations to coerce them into accepting a new era of hegemony continued threat by the uncivilized Zionists to resort to military action against our great nation is a clear example of this bitter reality. What he calls the Zionist regime is, of course, Israel. And both they and the United States boycotted the speech. To discuss the effect Ahmadinejad's speech will have on the Middle East, and particular the likelihood that Israel will attack Iran, I'm joined by Ben Wallace, MP, chair of the British Iranian All-Party Parliamentary Group, and Douglas Murray, who's from the Henry Jackson Society. Douglas Murray, how likely do you think it is that Israel will attack Iran? I think it's very likely, indeed inevitable, um, unless the international community, and I think particularly America, uh, makes it extremely clear, so clear indeed that there is absolutely no doubt to Iran that uh, the idea of the combination of the Islamic Revolution uh, government in Iran gaining uh, a nuclear device, gaining the capability to build a nuclear device is completely intolerable to us. Unless that is made entirely clear, the Israelis will continue to feel that it is only them that truly feels threatened by this, only them that truly recognizes the magnitude of this threat to world peace. And therefore, it will be the Israelis who will be the only ones who will act. Ben Wallace, do you agree with that? Uh, not quite. Um, I think, first of all, the Israelis will only act if they believe they'll get the support of countries like America and perhaps wider field like Europe, uh, you know, Britain, etc. And they will only act if they actually think they can achieve the destruction of the nuclear program. Uh, and that is, I think, one of the challenges ahead. And, and as we see, even within Ar Israel, both the Ministry of Defence sources there and indeed uh, ex-head of Mossad are split on whether Israel would be able to achieve that. Right, but is there more that should be done then in the West to prevent those hostilities escalating? Well, I think uh, the West has gone down already fairly unilateral sanctions, uh, you know, without China and Russia coming alongside it. There's uh, been a lot of pressure on Iran through both financial sanctions uh, to some extent, elements of oil sanctions. Uh, and I think we're really in the zone to try and see whether Iran is going to respond to this. Uh, you know, the, the problem is this is not just about Israel. What, what people forget, and, it, and it's almost, it's not quite a sideshow, but actually this is much more about Saudi and Iran and the rivalries between Sunni and Shiism in the region uh, and who is going to be the dominant partner uh, in that area. And I think that's what we, we often forget. And the worry for the West, the real worry for the West, is that Israel will may be a full start. They may trigger something uh, that both America, Britain and, and many other people do not want to happen uh, and now and even if it was unsuccessful, cause a real problem in that region. But are you saying then that actually the threats from Ahmadinejad over the years have been, if you like, just playing to the audience in terms of Israel um, and that Israel takes it far too seriously? Or, or, or what is it you're implying? Well, first of all, Israel and Iran, as and actually in other parts of the Middle East, have a huge uh, history of rhetoric as opposed to the mm. reality that they do below the scene. Throughout the whole 80s, at the height of the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini, the last Supreme Leader's rhetoric against Zionist Israel, as he would call it, against the sort of, uh, you know, the states that shouldn't be, 
uh, in Iran and Israel were allies. It was Israel that was arming Iran throughout the Iran-Iraq war, not the West. It was Israel that knew that on, on many occasions Iran was the counterbalance to Iraq okay. and, and Egyptian power. So we have to separate rhetoric from often the reality. Well, and, it, it, and doesn't let, Britain have to do that? In that, in that case, let, let me be as, as clear as possible. This is not uh, about rhetoric uh, and not about rhetoric only. I think it would be a great mistake uh, to think that. Uh, the president uh, of Iran, the supreme leader, all of the senior figures in the Iranian regime have for 30 years expressed a desire to wipe out the state of Israel. But and to, and if I may just, just, if I yes. just finish, and to annihilate uh, the nation. Now, among other things at the moment, they are doing what they can with their current spread of uh, capabilities in the region. They arm Hezbollah, for instance. They fund Hezbollah, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Hezbollah then spends its time destabilizing the Lebanon, currently is massacring people in Syria who are trying to overthrow the Assad regime, and of course has been waging a war for three decades on Israel. That's what it's doing now. If you like what uh, Iran is doing without a nuclear bomb, you'll love what they do when they've got one. The idea this is solely about rhetoric is a terrible mistake but the rhetoric does matter and it is not nothing that a world leader like Ahmadinejad is able to continuously claim that the last Holocaust did not happen whilst calling for the next one to occur Right, you're underestimating the threat here, Ben Wallace, uh, says well, Douglas Murray. You're making a terrible mistake if you think it's just no, rhetoric. No, no I, I don't say it's just rhetoric, and I absolutely agree that Iran has used its uh, third parties and its terrorist links to uh, certainly wage war on Ira Israel, and, and I, I don't underestimate you know, the damage that does to Israelis and the Israeli position in the Middle East. But, you know, let's remember, uh, and this is, you know, the, Mir Degan, the ex-head of Mossad, so certainly not, a, not an amateur in this game, said only in March this year he did not believe that the Iranian people were irrational and nor were their leadership when it came to mutually assured destruction. So sh should Iran suddenly decide to have a nuclear weapon, uh, you know, it was very clear that uh, they didn't think the Iranians wanted to obliterate themselves because right. that would be really happened. Let's, let's, let's take this straight on. First of all, the Israel is a, is a democracy. It has a plurality of opinion. It has very many voices. Uh, sit in a room with six Israelis well, and you'll get seven Mossad opinions. The ex-head of is quite a significant uh, individual. Abs I mean, not... Absolutely, and so is the Prime Minister of, of Israel, a, a very significant individual and with experience in these matters. There are many Israelis, not just Prime Minister Netanyahu, but many others who realise this threat and recognise it and recognise it should be taken seriously. But one other point is very important to mention on this. Uh, this is a problem for Israel first. There is no doubt about that. Anyone right. who thinks that's not the case is... Britain, is does big. Britain really have a role in this? Uh, we do have a role. We already have a role in sanctions. We will have a role in other things as well. But just one other point that's very important. This is a problem for Israel first, but only first. For the region and for the world, what happens after Iran goes nuclear, we already know, the IAEA already knows, all the international bodies already know, is that Saudi, Egypt, all of the other countries in the region will themselves be nuking up. At that point, you have the most volatile region in the world armed to the teeth with the most genocidal weaponry. If anybody thinks this is solely about Israel, they are very greatly mistaken. Well, well, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Yes, Let's on remember, then. Pakistan has a nuclear weapon. Are you Israel, glad that's the situation, on, or would you well, rather on, stop there? Am I glad Israel has a nuclear weapon? No, I'm not either. Oh, really? Let's, let's rem well, no, I'm not. Let's remember the Middle East nuclear arms race, if that's what you want to describe it, started with Israel, and Israel okay. does not comply with the UN IEA directives Let aimed me. at it. So we have to recognise that the real issue here, and let's remember... I know what's in Israel's national interest, and I fully defend their right to defend themselves. But that is not Britain's national interest. Let's, let's no, remember right. this. Now, that okay. is a good question. Who, who, is, who is blowing up yes. Twin Towers? Who is, who, is, you know, who is plotting to kill and murder in this country? It is not Shia Iranian-sponsored okay. terrorism. Okay. It's Wahhabi Sunni and, extremism, and who is, it? Let Doug, who let is Doug... not iranian sponsored okay, let's it's Saudi that sponsored. is the key what is in britain's interest here in terms of what foreign policy we undertake well first of all i'm sorry that the conservative mp in question doesn't mind the attack assault on our embassy in tehran which was done with the backing and encouragement of the iranian government I, I'm, I'm sorry that the ransacking of embassies isn't but a, let's get to the point of britain's interest anymore, britain, but britain's interest in, in 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 how they our, handle our interest the... our interest is extremely clear first of all israel is an ally of ours and the only thriving democracy in the region and security interest. Secondly, it is in our national interest that the Middle East does not go nuclear across the board, because if it does, we will see a Mexican gunfight, at the end of which 
nobody will know who started it. I'm going to have to finish it there. Well, but, well, gentlemen, I'm I so sorry, Ben. Want nuclear either. Ben. Let's remember, we want to take nuclear weapons out of the Middle East. OK. That includes Israel and Pakistan. Take them all out and you lose Israel. It's gentlemen, as simple as that. I have to stop you both there, but thank you both very much for a very interesting discussion. Wow. What an interesting debate. You can tell this was really, really, really heated. Wow. And I believe uh, it was uh, uh, just like the title says, Douglas Murray discusses Iran and Israel on the BBC Daily Politics. I believe uh, this uh, debate uh, is about uh, uh, Iran and Israel, which are uh, countries are uh, in the Middle East uh, from the points they have stated and from the fact they have stated uh, in this debate that uh, 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 Iran want to start the production of their nuclear uh, nuclear weapon. And according to Douglas, Douglas Murray uh, facts and from what Douglas Murray uh, believes that if uh, Iran should be allowed to uh, produce uh, the nuclear weapon just since they have already proposed uh, the production. If they are to allow to uh, produce a nuclear weapon, there are other countries in the Middle East like Egypt and Saudi. They are going to, uh, follow, uh, they are going to follow the same step in producing their own nuclear weapon. And in so doing, in so doing this country uh, in the Middle East will be the uh, Will be the most vol of will be the most volatile countries that uh, uh, uh will be the most volatile countries and because of the production of uh this nuclear weapon a lot of genocide will be carried out that's what uh uh uh, uh, shall, uh that's what Douglas Murray uh is afraid of that they are not going to they are not only going to arm themselves but they are going to uh, use this weapon to terrorize other countries around them and other countries surrounding them. That's the point uh, Douglas Murray uh, is trying to prove in this debate. And uh, from uh, the other speaker, uh, the other speaker, he, may, he mentioned uh, a point which I believe uh, should also be considered. He mentioned the point that uh, Israel, uh, Israel is the first country uh, in the Middle East to start uh, the production of a uh, nuclear weapon. Though he also agree based on, uh, though he's also he also agree and concur that. Do Israel embark uh, in the production of uh, of their nuclear weapon in order to be able to you know defend their country because their country have gone through a lot of uh have gone through a, a lot of attacks so the they 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 the, the produce this nuclear weapon in order to uh defend themselves and he also mentioned that Israel went against uh uh, uh the United Nations in order to produce uh this nuclear weapon what then why should Britain or the society, uh, why should Britain or other countries or America be consigned uh, to stop, uh, be consigned to stop uh, Iran from producing their uh, their own nuclear weapon? And I really uh, relate uh, with Douglas Murray points. I really relate with Douglas Murray points uh, based on uh, the facts they have stated in this video. And I believe every one of the speaker they agreed on this. They agreed on this fact that. Iran, uh, Iran for over thirty years have been planning on how to uh, how to wipe Israel. Have been trying, planning on how to wipe Israel, even without nuclear weapon. Iran has been has been funding Hezbollah, has been funding other terrorist organization to attack Israel. Then, if Iran is doing this without nuclear weapon, what will be the case when Iran uh, uh, when Iran uh, starts producing nuclear weapon? And I believe this should be considered. Not only, uh, not only by, uh, not only by Israel. This should be considered by Britain. This should be considered by America. This should be considered by other web, uh, other countries. Because I believe they, I believe if uh, Iran is to, if Iran, uh, if Iran uh, should start producing their own nuclear weapon, other countries surrounding I uh, Iran uh, in the Middle East, like uh, Egypt, like Israel, they are also going to start producing their own. With a weapon at the end of the day, there, there, there's going to be a lot of a lot of genocide. A lot of people are going to lose their life. So I believe uh, the United Nations should should come together on how to uh, on how to address this issue. I've really learned a lot listening to every one of the speakers, listening to Douglas Murray, 
and I believe you also do. So I would like to hear your comments. What do you think about this debate? Uh, uh, about this debate, what do you think about uh, Iran producing their own missile weapon? And do you think uh, Iran producing their own missile weapon will make other Middle East countries surrounding Iran, like Egypt and uh, Saudi, to also start uh, producing their own missile? And do you think countries uh, should be afraid? Uh, do you think um, what are the measures you think can be considered in order to be able to address this issue? Keep the comment coming. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.